guys, Tom here, and welcome to a new video. And today, I'm doing my WWE Money in the Bank 2014 predictions. Money in the Bank is my favourite pay-per-view. WWE does it so good. It has so many surprises. It's very, very unpredictable, exciting, everything like that. Every year, I cannot wait for Money in the Bank to come around. And Sunday, the pay-per-view is Money in the Bank 2014. The headline match is the WWE World of Witch Championship ladder match and to start this video I'm going to predict that match. Can we get 100 likes on this video? If it gets 100 likes, I will do a review of the show. It's going to be incredible. I cannot wait. So look forward to, to my review if I do get 100 likes on this video. Like this video or Brock Lesnar will give you an F5. So, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship ladder match will be the main event. And it probably is one of the biggest matches WWE has put on this year so far. So, it's a huge one and it's very, very important. I'm going to predict it in this video. So who do I see winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, the unified titles, and I see John Cena winning the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Yes, I can hear a lot of people watching this video yawning at me saying John Cena is winning, but there's just so many reasons why I see John Cena winning this match. Raw ratings have been bad, and in my honest opinion, Raw hasn't been this bad for, for, for a few years. I mean, we've had such a run of very bad Monday Night Raws. This week's Raw wasn't so bad, but we've just had like two months of really bad Monday Night Raws. And who's the one guy WWE can rely on? The guy that they've relied on for 12 years, and that's John Cena. He's going to bring in their ratings back once and for all. John Cena is really on man to carry your company throughout the summer. Also, WWE stocks have been very, very bad. They lost millions only a month ago. And who's the guy that sells the most merchandise, the most pay-per-views? Who's the guy that just brings the money, the number one guy that brings WWE money? It's John Cena. He's best for business. And at this current time, that WWE's in a slump at the moment. They're not doing too, too great business-wise. And they're not really doing too great for the fans. They're not pleasing the fans. Who's the number one guy that has probably the most fans ever? It is John Cena. Yes, he has a lot of haters, but he's got the most fans without a doubt. And it just all points towards John Cena at this current time in the WWE. He's best for business. He's best for ratings. He's best for fans. He gets people talking. At this current time, he's the number one guy they can rely on and they'll do good with. And it's John Cena. I'm sorry to say, but there, it's going to happen one day that he's going to overtake Ric Flair's world title runs. This will give him 15 championships and that'll make him join with Ric Flair on world titles. It's going to happen. He is going to surpass him and it's going to happen soon. So why don't they make it happen at Money in the Bank on Sunday? He's best for everything. They're doing bad at the moment and he's the number one guy they can rely on. Also, there was a poster leaked this week about Brock Lesnar and Summer and uh, 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 at SummerSlam. On the poster, Amazon leaked a picture of what the DVD cover will look like for SummerSlam 2014. It was a pre-order DVD for SummerSlam, of course, and Cena and Brock were both on that DVD cover and poster. Why would, be, why would they both be on a poster at the same time if they weren't in the same match? You wouldn't have Cena and Brock on there if they weren't in a match at SummerSlam. So it is rumoured that Cena will face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. And also, Brock Lesnar was rumoured to go to SummerSlam with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. Due to the fact he did in fact defeat the streak makes him probably the number one contender for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. And if Brock vs. Cena is going to happen at SummerSlam, you've got to have John Cena as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion for that match to happen. And if he does win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship before summer, it's probably going to happen at Money in the Bank rather than Battleground the next pay-per-view because Battleground's a bit too short notice to create a match between Brock and John Cena, so he'll probably become the champion at Money in the Bank, John Cena, your new Dory World Heavyweight Champion. They can rely on him so much to bring in ratings, 
bring money in and hopefully get WWE out of that slump that they've got into over the last few months. And if you look at the competitors, there's not really anybody that comes close to winning on Sunday. Now, you could say Roman Reigns could win it, but in my opinion, he's too young and he really isn't proven in singles competition yet. How can you rely on somebody like Roman Reigns, who isn't proven yet, to carry your company in, who are in such a slump at the moment? He's too young. They should carry on building this guy and wait for the full time when he is ready. You could say he's ready now. But you can't be certain. Would you like to throw away Roman Reigns, give him a title run too early on in his, in his career and ruin him forever? If you build him up correctly and give him the titles when he's fully ready, then that's a better option to choose. He's not ready yet. He's not winning on Sunday. Cesaro is doing fine with Paul Heyman, but also Cesaro got a big loss at Payback 2014. Would you see him being a legitimate champion and winning the Dudu World Heavyweight Championships? The biggest concern here is he's too young. Can you see him carrying the company? Considering they are in a huge slump at the moment as well, can you see Cesaro carrying the company with the top title right here, right now? And I cannot see it. I cannot see Raw opening every week with Cesaro being our champion. Also, Randy Orton, he's had his time of had his time as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, and we want somebody fresh and new as that unified champion. We had about four months with him being the champion, and we don't want to go through that all again. Alberto Del Rio and Sheamus can be put in the same bracket here because they have been very irrelevant for the past few months. Yes, Sheamus looks a bit better as the United States Champion, but could you really have a United States Champion? being the WWE World Devweight Champion at the same time. No, no, no. But the reason why I put them in the same bracket is because they're both so boring and stale. Do you want some stale character that nobody's really into being your WWE World Devweight Champion at the top star at the moment? No, we don't want Del Rio or Sheamus as the champion right now. They're too stale, they're too boring, and they're really the least over guys in this match. Bray Wyatt, he did suffer a huge loss to John Cena at Payback, and he really isn't in a good place at the moment. He's very irrelevant, he's lost many matches in the last few months, this last month, and he honestly isn't in a good place at the moment. If this match happened a month ago, I'd say Bray Wyatt was the favourite. But honestly, Bray Wyatt, he lost a big match against Cena last month. So do you really feel like he's been built up well enough to become your champion? No. Also, I don't even know why Kane's in this match. It did make for a cool segment on Raw, but honestly, he just doesn't feel like he deserves to be in this match, and he just doesn't feel right in the match. He wasn't part of the build which happened on SmackDown last week. You know, they had that 4 versus 3 match on SmackDown and Raw. Kane wasn't a part of that, so he feels like a bit of an outsider, and it would feel strange for him to go in on Sunday and win. He just doesn't feel part of this match, so he's really not winning. So it all boils down to John Cena winning on Sunday. Yes, you, you can yawn all you like, but it's best for business. The Money in the Bank contract ladder match will happen on Sunday as well. You've got Kofi Kingston and Rob Van Dam, who are pretty much in there just to get some good spots there. The high flyers, they're going to make for a very, very entertaining match. It's not sure whether Bad News Barrett will be in the match. He did suffer, suffer an injury at the main event and SmackDown tapings on Tuesday, Tuesday, so it's very unlikely he will be in this match. But the fact that there are already seven guys in this match, it doesn't matter too much that they count this guy out because honestly, a six-man ladder match is absolutely fine, of course. So if Bad News Barrett is cut from this match, it's not going to make for much a difference either. Also, Jack Swagger has been very, very irrelevant for the last few months, so he just really doesn't feel right in this match. For me, Kofi and Rob Van Dam and Jack Swagger are huge outsiders in this match. Kofi and Jack Swagger really haven't done anything in the last few months. I can't remember the last time Jack Swagger and Kofi Kingston had a memorable match whatsoever. Can you see see them being the, the next in line to pick up the Dudley World Devil Championship if they walk out on Sunday as the contract holder? No, they're definitely not the people you want to be carrying your company if they have been underutilized in the last few months. They just would not feel right to be holding that contract. And the fact that they could cash in and become the number one person in the company right now would just not feel right at all. Can you see Kofi and Swagger being on Raw as your champion every week? No. They're just in, Kofi's in there to make the spots and Swagger's just in there to make the numbers. 
Rob Van Dam does feel interesting to be a contract holder and do it again, but honestly, he's an old-timer. He's only re really in there at the moment just to put over guys. They always bring these old guys back like Jericho, so put over younger talent like a Ziggler, like an Ambrose, like a Bad News Barrett, like a Seth Rollins. So Rob Van Dam's never winning, probably never winning a title ever again in his career, He's pretty much in there to create some cool highlights during the match and have a fun and entertaining match. Also, Bad News Barrett was my number one guy to win this match until Tuesday when he got injured. And the fact that he might not even be in this match is a huge disappointment. But if he does make the match, somehow if his injury isn't as bad as people first thought, I still don't see him winning. Now, I did see him winning for a start off until he got injured. But now that he's injured, can they really risk giving him the contract? I mean, one, he could get injured again in the match, and two, he could get injured weeks down the line. And be and it'd be a huge shame if Bad News Barrett got injured as soon as picking up that contract. It's too risky and it could definitely happen. So they wouldn't risk giving him the contract since he did only get an injury on Tuesday. It could all happen again. And it could also happen on Sunday. And that's the reason why they might just kick him out of the match. Imagine if he got injured again on Sunday... And he's currently doing very well for himself and he'd have to take off a lot of time and he's doing fine at the moment. So it'd be a huge shame to put him in that match if they didn't have a plan for him to win anyway. So, Ziggler is the one for me. I honestly see Dolph Ziggler winning this match. Seth Rollins and Ambrose are doing fine. They're very, very over. They're looking hot at the moment. But honestly, they've only just come out of breaking up with the Shield. And Dolph Ziggler's proven that he can be a world champion. Seth Rollins has only just joined the authority. He's only just turned heel. It honestly is too early for him to become the WWE World Devilweight Champion and break up that briefcase. And also, Ambrose has only recently split off what from the Shield. They should probably build these both of these guys up over the next few months to make them top stars and make them ready for a WWE World Devweight Championship. But I honestly don't see them winning the briefcase at all because there'll probably be an angle during the match where Seth Rollins costs Ambrose the ladder match or Ambrose costs Seth Rollins the ladder match. Either one of them two situations will happen during this match to build a feud between Seth Rollins and Ambrose but the fact that they're already in a few together means that they don't need the briefcase to make them a star. They're happy how they are, they're over, they're heading towards a big blow-off match at a big pay-per-view, so why give them the briefcase? They're fine how they're doing, why waste the briefcase on them when you could make a huge star out of Ziggler at this pay-per-view? It's a safe bet to give it to Ziggler. Yes, he is injury prone, but he hasn't been injured for a long time. Ever since he cashed in last time, yes, it was a huge disappointment, but why don't you give Ziggler one more chance? He's very over. He's one of the most over guys on the roster. He's been wasted this last year, and he really needs a huge moment like this to boost his career back up to that main event level. He was doing so well two years ago, and this briefcase will do him wonders. He's very over with the crowd. Everybody loves him. He's just got everything. He's got the mic work, which is amazing at the moment. He's got the in-ring talent. He's got everything you want in a WWE World Heavyweight Champion. And honestly, the two other people I see winning were Rollins and Ambrose. But honestly, they're fine. They're doing fine. They're they're, they're going towards a feud, they don't need that briefcase, and they still need to be built up as, a, as heel and faces. They're building themselves up, and like Reigns, they haven't proven themselves in the WWE if they can carry the company forward in singles competition. Ziggler's done that, he seems like an outsider, they always choose outsiders in these Money in the Bank matches, like you saw with with. Damien Sandow last year and Ziggler honestly feels like an outsider in this match and it'd certainly create for an un unpredictable moment and the fact that the WWE Championship match is quite predictable you want an unpredictable moment to happen on this pay-per-view and that certainly would be for Ziggler to win on Sunday. Also, you've got the Usos taking on Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. Now, this match is quite easy to predict, and I'm going to predict Eric Rowan and Luke Harper to win this match. They got new theme music on Monday Night Raw, and it does seem like they're going to give them an opportunity with them tag team title belts. And it feels like a bit of a coincidence they've give them, given them new music just before the pay-per-view. It feels like they're going to give them the belts and let them run with it. The Usos have been champions for a few months now. It seems like, is it four months they've been champions? They honestly haven't done anything. They really haven't done anything special whatsoever. I've been very disappointed in this run. And I feel like the tag team titles... The tag division needs something exciting, somebody new to come in there and win them. And that's Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. What I can see happening on Sunday is them winning the tag team titles. 
So it seems like Bray Wyatt is going to walk out Money in the Bank as a loser once again. The Wyatt family seem like they're going in a bit of a slump. They lost at payback with Bray Wyatt. And obviously in the Money in the Bank main event, Bray Wyatt is going to lose it all. So they need something good to keep them alive. And a tag team title, tag team championship win on Sunday would keep the Wyatt family alive and keep them exciting. Putting the belts on Eric Rowan and Luke Harper seems like a great idea. They've proven they can work with the Usos and other competitors. They're very over. They get lots of heat. They've got new theme music. Let them run with it. Let them run with the titles. The Usos have been slightly boring these last few months. They didn't even defend it at Payback. Let it change. Give somebody, somebody new the titles like Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. And it'd certainly be a moment to remember. I can definitely see it happening. And I think it'd be awesome for Eric Rowan and Luke Harper to end with Bray Wyatt holding each tag team title belt. Imagine it. Bray Wyatt with his lantern and the two others with the tag team belts. That sounds epic and I'm just bored with the Usos. I really am. I thought they were going to do better than they have and I think the tag team titles need a change and it can all happen on at the payback uh, at the pay-per-view on Sunday. And also it feels like the Usos are a lot less over than when they actually captured the titles. Just change it please. I cannot wait for it to happen. It's going to be epic. Also, Paige against, uh, who's it, Naomi? Yeah, it's Naomi. Definitely Paige is winning here. There's no way Naomi is going to win. She hasn't been built up as a champion, and she just doesn't seem like a strong contender to, to, to defeat Paige. And what I see happening here is Cameron to cost Naomi the title, so Naomi might come close to winning, but Cameron costs her. Turning heel, it's very predictable to happen that Cameron is going to cost Naomi here. And that's where Paige gets the win. Her title run has been so boring. It really has. It's been a huge disappointment. And there's really been no competitor that's looked like defeating Paige so far. And once again, we go into a pay-per-view where it looks like Paige is just easily going to win. There's no way in hell Naomi is winning on Sunday. It's a huge disappointment. But once again, they've thrown away a decent title match. There's really been lame build towards this. There's really been no build towards it whatsoever. Except probably Monday Night Raw. And Naomi has got a win over Paige. But it doesn't really feel like she's winning on Sunday once again. I mean, would they really waste the win on Paige? I mean, if they were going to let Naomi win, they would have waited for it to win on Sunday. They wouldn't have given her the win on the main event show. So Paige is winning here. Yes, once again, she's going to go on that. She's probably going to keep the titles until AJ Lee comes back. Another match which will be added to the pay-per-view is Big E versus Rusev. Rusev is still coming off his debut, uh, his debut, his, uh, basically his debut push. So Rusev is definitely winning against Big E. It wouldn't feel right for Big E to win against Rusev because they couldn't really build off that. I mean, Big E hasn't done anything in the last few months. Why give him this win? Rusev's only just debuted a few months ago and they're still ranking up them wins ready for when he faces John Cena later down the line. That is the rumoured plan, so give Rusev as much momentum as they can when they get into that match. And honestly, can you really see Rusev losing a pay-per-view? Nah, he's not going to lose for a long time at a pay-per-view. The other match which might happen is Rybaxel against Goldust and Stardust. Goldust and Stardust will, will win that match if it does happen. That is because what they're doing with Cody Rhodes is they're seeing if that new gimmick works and if it gets over, they're going to go with it. But if it doesn't get over in enough time before SummerSlam, they're going to scrap it and go with Goldust against Cody Rhodes. And now this will be the first opportunity to see if Stardust works on a pay-per-view level. And also, they're obviously going to give Stardust the win. It's his first pay-per-view match. They need to give him the momentum and see if he gets over with this win. If they give him a loss at the pay-per-view, then you can't, really, you can't really tell if the gimmick's got over or not because he'd suffer a big loss. If you give him the big loss, you can test if he gets over. And they really need to hurry up and test if it gets over in enough time. Because, I mean, they've not got long to see if this gets over and works with the WWE fans. They need to give him this win on the pay-per-view and see if he gets over. If he doesn't, they're going to have to scrap that idea. But they've got to give him the win and find out soon if it's going to work. But I definitely see Stardust and Goldust winning that match. And the last and final match I can predict is Layla against Summer Rae. It does seem like this match is going to be added to the show, maybe on SmackDown or later down the line. Maybe when we actually watch the pay-per-view live, but the only person I see winning here is Summer Rae. They tried to push Layla in, in the past and it just really has never paid off. Summer Rae is the younger competitor, she's fresh and she seems like the flavour of the month 
all season if you like and it really does look like Summer Rae, the younger competitor, will win this match and Layla to put over Summer Rae. So that's my predictions of Money in the Bank 2014. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter for live coverage of the pay-per-view on Sunday. Thanks for watching. Take care. Spike your hand.